Okay, so in this video, we are gonna derive the C2H character table. And um, we're gonna do this slightly differently than a other video I have in which we derive it using uh, the orthogonality theorem. Here, we're gonna derive it using uh, functions. And so we have to start off as we always do, um, thinking about what all the symmetry elements are. They're E, um, C2, the principal rotation axis. This is for C2H. So there's C2, we're gonna have to define that as our Z. We're gonna have an X and we're gonna have a Y. There's one mirror plane, uh, a sigma H, that is in the plane of the molecule. It's a planar molecule, all C2H, uh, the, uh, this, this molecule is. Um, but all C2Hs have a horizontal mirror plane that's in the plane of the molecule in this case, and it's cutting through, it's perpendicular to uh, the principal rotation axis, which is the Z. So that's why it gets an H nomenclature, H stands for horizontal. Think about it like perpendicular. And then there's also an inversion uh, center where X, Y, X inversion, remember, is any arbitrary point X comma Y comma Z goes to negative X comma negative Y comma negative Z. So something at the top left in the back will be transformed by inversion operation to the opposite of that which is in this case, um, <clears throat> the right and the front um, and the bottom. So if we do that inversion operation on all of these atoms, we get the same molecule back. So we know we have an inversion center. All right, and we only have four operations. All these operations are very different functionally. So um, they're gonna all be in separate classes, identity, and inversion are always in their own classes. And one of these is a mirror plane um, and one of them is a rotation. So those are very different and mirror planes and rotations are always in separate classes. So it's very easy to break these up. In other videos, I go over you know, more complicated cases when I derive more complicated character tables, how to group these into classes. In this case, they're all four in separate classes. So we have our identity, we have our C2, we have our um, I, inversion, and we have our sigma H. And in the top uh, left corner here, I wanna put the uh, point group that we're for this character table, which is uh, C to H. And then um, I'm gonna leave room here on the right for functions that we're gonna test. And notice that I dropped the uh, hat notation here because these are no longer operations we're talking about. We're talking about classes. Now, each class only has one operation in it. So it's not too important, but you know that's the nomenclature that we use in group theory. So uh, now we have to think about our character table rules. And our character table rules, I have a video on that. Our character table rules um, state that the number of columns, the number of classes has to be equal to the number of rows, right? So we have four columns here, and that means we're gonna have four irreducible representations. We don't know what the Mulliken symbols are for them yet. We can't assign Mulliken symbols. We don't know what to call them until we have derived what these vectors or irreducible representations are. But what we do know is that we're gonna have four of them. So we give them these generic names, uh, just gamma. And the first Mulliken symbol, uh, first irreducible representation, sorry, is always gonna be just positive ones for all character tables. So totally symmetric. Um, representation. So ones across the board. Great. And then we can use the principle that the sum of the squares of the uh, dimensionalities, that is the character underneath the uh, identity, is going to be um, equal to the order of the point group, which is the number of operations in the point group. So I don't know what these values are yet, but I know that by my character table rules, this is another character table rules, one squared plus a squared plus b squared plus c squared is gonna be equal to four because we have four symmetry operations, one plus one plus one plus one. It's not the number of classes, it's the number of operations. In this case, they're the same, right? But in most character tables, most point groups, that's not true because we'll have multiple operations in, in some of the same classes. And these dimensionalities, these characters under the identity have to be equal to one, two, three, four, five. And for most character tables, it's gonna be one or twos. Um, only the really higher order point groups like tetrahedral and octahedral and icosahedral are you going to have um, threes, fours, and fives. So um, the only way that this equation can be valid is if A, B, and C are all equal to one. Because one squared plus one squared plus one squared plus one squared equals one. 
So I can erase these, um, and sorry, this should just been uh, A, B, and C, but you get the idea. A, B, and C should be equal to one. One squared plus one squared plus one squared is equal to four, which is the order of the point group. Okay, so now um, last time what we did is in the, in the previous in the other video I have, we looked at uh, just using the orthogonality principle that all these vectors have to be orthogonal one another, that is the dot product adjusted for the number of operations in each class is equal to zero. We use that principle to puzzle out what these vectors had to be equal to, these irreducible representations. Um, but here we're gonna instead use different functions. So let's test different functions. I always like to start with Z. And what we do is when we test a different function, we think about how the Z vector in this case, we're testing the function Z, how the Z vector transforms in C2H symmetry with the different point groups, with the different operations. So if we do an identity on Z, we're gonna get Z. Um, if we do a C2 on Z, well, this is, we have to think about this, this is rotating this vector 180 degrees, but um, it's not changing anything. It, just this head is still gonna be pointed up if we do that, right? We're rotating across the Z, that's where the C2 is. So Z also goes to Z. If we do a sigma um, h, what's gonna uh, find oh, the identity? If we do an identity, what's gonna happen? Well, the definition of identity from earlier in the video is that an arbitrary point x, y, z goes to negative x, negative y, negative z. And so z clearly goes to negative z now. And sigma h, well, sigma h is a mirror plane in the x, y plane. And so the z vector is looking at itself and it's gonna, in the plane, it's gonna get reflected downwards to negative z. So z goes to negative z. And really, strictly speaking, what you have to do on this, and at this point you can derive it as one, one, negative one, negative one. But where these characters come from is there's a matrix, a one by one matrix that um, explains these different transformations. Um, so z times one, uh, matrix one by one matrix containing the element one gives you z, z times a one by one matrix containing an element negative one gives you negative z, and et cetera. And then you take the trace or the diagonal process matrix. And in uh, my other derivation videos, I do this. And sometimes you get two by two matrices, sometimes you get three by three matrices. So it's important to know this. But then this is where the character comes from is taking the trace or the sum of the um, components across the main diagonal of the matrix. And so that is where the name character table comes from because character is another name for trace of the matrix in linear algebra. So um, here we derive function Z that transforms as one, one, negative one, negative one. That's great. So we can do a very similar thing now, um, and I'm not gonna write all these matrices out, but we can do another very similar thing for um, other functions. So we can try um, X, we can try Y, and so that's what we're gonna do. So what about X? Well, X is gonna to go to X and I'm gonna draw a uh, X vector here in blue, just so we have that. And I'll erase our uh, Z vectors so we don't confuse ourselves. There's our X vector. Um, and how about in, yeah, we'll just keep that there. X goes to X, identity goes to the same thing. Sorry about that. And, uh, C2, so uh, we're doing a rotation, right? So we're doing a um, rotation around 180 degrees. And so that spins this X vector to the negative itself. So uh, X went to negative X. Inversion, X is gonna go to negative X by definition. And for the mirror plane, sigma H, it's in the plane of the uh, vector, of the x vector, it's in the xy plane. So if, if, a, if a, a vector is in the plane, it doesn't do anything when it's in the mirror plane. So that's gonna go to x. So this gives us one, negative one, negative one, one. That's something different that we didn't have before that transforms as x. What about y? y vector, let's um, write that in green now y vector 
is going to be there. Y goes to Y with identity. Y is going to spin around to negative Y when we're thinking about doing a uh, 180 degree rotation, right? Spinning around. I guess that should have been in green technically. But it spun, got spun around. And inversion, by definition, goes into the negative cell. And the y vector again is in the x, y plane. So nothing's going to happen. And so we get one, negative one, negative one, one. That's exactly what we got for y when we put a, 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 put a y here. For those of you who've seen other character table derivation videos, notice that I did not put parentheses in, in here. This is different, OK? X and y are transforming independently of one another. Um, they both can be described um, just from the themselves. They have a dimension, a they use a character, uh, they use an irreducible representation that has a dimension of one. And so it would be wrong to write this with parentheses. X and Y are not depending upon one another. They're, um, they're independent. So that's just for those of you who have seen me do these other character tables or are wondering the difference between parentheses and not. Um, this is one of the few examples where X and Y are actually independent, this point group. Um, and at this point, uh, what else can we do? Well, we can test some other functions. And so we can test some quadratics. And so uh, what if we test um, something like uh, z squared? Well, z squared, you can see if you square all these terms, it's going to go like this, right? It's going to go ones across the board. Um, if you square any of these terms, uh, you know, x or y, that's not going to help you. So all those quadratics are going to go ones across the board. What about uh, x times y? That's another quadratic. We could do an xz um, as well. Let's actually do those are other quadratics, right? So we'll, we'll do all of them. But let's look at xy. Well, xy, we have it mapped out here. xy goes as xy for identity. xy for c2 is going to be negative x times negative y. So that's xy. xy um, for inversion is going to be as xy and x, y for um, the last one here uh, is also x, y. So that's totally symmetric. What about x, z? x, z, well, would be, um, we can just kind of multiply this out here. It's going to be a negative 1, a 1, and a negative 1. And that's actually something different. And y, z is going to be the same thing because y and x transform the same way. You can do cube of functions. So, so we're basically done here. You can also do cube of functions if you wanted to, right? Um, you can think of things like uh, uh, x c squared. Well, that's actually not going to be right. We have to think. We have to think about that carefully. We have to mul multiply it out. Let's let's think about x c squared. So, um, it's going to be x times z times z. That's a one x times z times z, that's a negative one. x times z times z, that's a negative one. And x times z times z, that is a positive one. So that's actually a combination that we didn't get before. So it, it doesn't transform as a. It's going to transform as a linear combination of these vectors. So that's complicated. But anyway, um, quadratics we got down. And you can do some of some, uh, the other ones. Uh, but we derive the character table, and now we just need to put in the Molkin symbols. So Molkin symbol rules tells you is you have a dimensionality of one. You're going to be an A or B. All these are ones, so they're all going to be A's or B's. How do we distinguish between A and B? If it's symmetric with the principal rotation axis, we give it an A. Principal rotation axis is C2, symmetric, positive numbers. Anti-symmetric, you give it a B, negative ones here. And then here you have identity. So you're going to have G's and U's, garotas and ingratas, ungratas. G, if you're garota, if you're symmetric with the um, inversion center, and U's if you're anti symmetric. And that is our character table we derived. And so if we go now to you know, something that you might find online, um, you're going to get something very similar. Okay. And uh, we were trying to do, I think, x squared z. Um, and so you, you can you can do it. We must have done some math wrong there for the cubic function. Let's see, x squared z. 
But basically, you know, you're just going to be multiplying these out. So you get one squared um, <clears throat> times one, that gives you one. Then you got negative one uh, squared times one, that gives you one. So you're transforming like this so far. And negative one for the uh, z component times negative, negative one. Um, we're doing x squared z. So this is x, negative one times negative one, that's x squared. So it's one times the negative one for the z. You can see like this. And then one squared times negative one, you can see the negative one. So, you know, that's how you can figure out these cubic functions. It's very easy just by multiplying all these ones. In this case, when you have twos and stuff in the character table, it's a little bit different. You can also see that our ordering here, they have A, G, B, G, A, U, uh, B, U. Our ordering was different, right? It doesn't matter. This is totally arbitrary. Um, and it doesn't matter, you know, how you swap the columns or swap the rows. We got the names right and everything is good. So that's a different way of um, writing this character table. You can see my other video for driving it just with using the orthogonality theorem. And you don't have to go through any of this work testing the functions, but there's some other work that you have to go through puzzling it out. So you can choose which way you like the best.